Well, good day, YouTube, and welcome to another episode of the Albino Rhino Beer Review. Today of the Rhino, we have our bottle opener out, which means we have a beer from Bushwhacker. That's right, guys, Bushwhacker. So first and foremost, thank you, Dion, for this beer. This is one of the last housewarming gifts I have left. I think I have two more from, uh... no, sorry, I have one more from Rebellion. And one more from, one more from Bushwhacker after this. So again, thank you very much, Dion. It was great working with you. I actually went to give him a, a review on Facebook and all that, but I couldn't find like a page that would let me review him, which is too bad because he did great. It was great to meet the guy, all that fun stuff. Anyway, bang, Bushwhacker. What, I don't even know what this is called. This is the, what the fuck? Folliser, is that what it is, Folliser? Um, I'm gonna have to look this one up so uh, you can try and guess because the one thing I can say is, is as amazing as the Bushwhacker logos are, they always go into the, uh, into what we're looking at. Now this says strong beer, but it says down here, what, oh, alcohol is 5.8. Uh, January 15th, 2024 is the bottling date, but do you see what I mean? Like the stuff goes into it and they always use like a weird, almost, it's not cursive, but it's like, a, almost like a medieval font style. Like, I can read the Porter, I can read the Bushwhacker, I can almost never read what they have up there. Uh, and that's too bad, because they're good beers. They are, and they they look nice. And uh, they're the only bottled beers I've had so far in Saskatchewan. I don't know if bottled beers just don't really exist in Saskatchewan. Okay, so I've been a little heavy-handed here. So part of the head is my fault. And I mean, a lot of times when I pour, and you gotta remember too, right? I haven't poured a beer in. Other than the few times I get out for, for vacation, I haven't really poured a beer in five years. When I was in Pavernatook, I'd do the odd beer review. I think we did like, 50 beer reviews in the three and a half years I was in Pavernatook. And I'd buy beer while I was in Pavernatook, but I would just drink them from the can and throw the cans out. Um, but for, uh, for the last five years, other than when I'm out on vacation, I don't pour often. So you lose, you lose the price. It, yes, it's like riding a bike and you should pick it up fast and I can, I, I don't miss the cup. So, I mean, I picked something up fast, but I have been pretty heavy handed lately with my pores and I'm just, I'm getting back into it. I'm getting back into it. Give me, give me a break, YouTube. Give me a break. Okay. I've been, I'm just getting back into it. Okay. Okay. It's been five years, guys. probably why I can't get a job in the brewing industry. I can't even pour a beer anymore. Damn it. They watch these videos and they're like, look, you can't pour a beer. Don't hire them. Doesn't matter how much he knows. Don't hire them. <laughs> so to the light here, I'm getting a beautiful mahogany brown hue coming through the bottom. To the light back there and they're both different lightings. One of them's like the natural daylight and the other one's the bright white but to the natural daylight, I'm getting mahogany brown. To the bright daylight, I'm getting mahogany brown. And the bright daylight's actually the one behind me. Uh, Off-white head, it's actually slightly mocha. It's very thick. Tiniest bit of snap, crackle, and pop going on in there. I've been told that the phrase snap, crackle, pop is copyright. Copy wrote, copy written. I can't believe you can copyright stuff like that. But I mean, the same thing was talked about when I was talking to uh, 
when I was talking to the guys at Flying Monkeys and we were talking about their name, right? And they were like, originally we were Anchor Steam Brewing Company. No, sorry. They were originally um, Simcoe Steam because Barry is in Simcoe County. He's like, yeah, originally we were Simcoe Steam Brewing and, and Fritz Maytag called me up and he's like, hey, I hear you opened a brewery. And he goes, yeah, Simcoe Steam. And he goes... Well, just so you know, I own the copyright for the word steam in beer because he owned uh, Steamworks Brewing Company, which did uh, the California Common and not Steamworks. No, what the fuck was Anchor, Anchor Steam. He owned Anchor Brewing Company, which did Anchor Steam. And uh, sorry, it's been so long since I've been in this stuff and I haven't talked about it in a long time because I don't talk about my exploits in alcohol and all that when I'm in dry communities and stuff. So, I'm I, I'm losing things as I go. Plus, I'm getting older now. I might get, I might be getting a little bit of early onset of dementia. It's not like it's not like that's common in my family. It is common in my family. Um, so I'm a little worried about that. But anyway, so and I I remember saying to him, and Boy Chuck was our filming guy at the time. I'm like, but but steam's just a word. I go, can't you just copyright anything like beer? He goes, yeah, or the. Why can't I just copyright the word the? And any brewery that uses the word the, I can sue. And I'm like, I'm fully on board with you here, sir. I'm fully on board with you. Anyway, I guess we should get to the smell because again, I'm, this is the problem, right? When I do these up by myself and I don't have any friends in Regina, I don't have anyone in Regina, I have nobody. When I do these by myself, I, uh, I, I ramble. I ramble more so than I do with, with guys with me and when there's guys with me sometimes we can still make 12 minute videos but they're usually at least entertaining because we're feeding off of each anyway send okay chocolate and coffee out of the glass i got a little bit of stuff up my nose out of the bottle oh Chocolate, coffee, molasses, that, that smells divine. Slanche. <sighs> hmm. I didn't smell that. Um, it's very, it, it's more stoutish than porterish. It has a very, very roasty toastiness to it. There is coffee. There is chocolate. It's burnt coffee. It's burnt black coffee at that. It's like the pot was left on the element too long. And, well, the urn, I guess, was left on the element too long and it burnt. There's a nice chocolate flavor up at the forefront. Chocolate and molasses up at the forefront. Then you get a bready biscuitiness that fades into a burnt black coffee, almost a baker's chocolate, a burnt wood, and a tobacco smoke. This is this is very stoutish. It's a stouty porter. Mouthfeel on this is actually a little heavier than you'd expect on a porter as well. It's it's more akin to a stout. It is more well, I guess I guess I can't say that. It's full bodied, yet it's a lighter mouthfeel. So I guess possibly possibly, yeah, okay, okay. Porter more so than a stout. I'm just looking at that the the full body, this just the envelopment of flavor. Excuse me. That's a really good beer. <laughs> like that's all I can really say about it. It's a really good beer. And I can't say much other than that. I mean,
it's a solid brew. It's a solid brewski, man. It's a solid brewski. Uh, I I could drink this forever, but I'm having a hard time explaining it. I really am. I'm having a hard time putting, formulating an explanation for what I'm tasting. And I don't have that problem often. Um... Okay, so here's here's what I could say. To what I know of a porter, to what to what you're told a porter should taste like, is this stylistically there? I'd argue it's probably a hybrid between a regular porter, an American porter, and a Baltic porter, because it has it has characteristics of all three. And, I mean, I like a regular porter the most of all of them. I mean, I am getting that, like I said, that tobacco smoke, that burnt wood, that everything else. Uh, and that's partially coming from hops as well. To the point that this is coming off very American-esque. And the American Pale Ale, the American IPA, the American Lager, the American Red, the American Porter. I'm not a huge fan of the American anything. To be honest, because it's always more hops. It's more hops. It always is. It always is. Uh, but this one, I still like regardless of that because of the fact that it has characteristics of a regular porter and characteristics of a Baltic porter. Uh, I, I'd like it. I'd like it. I'd like it. How do I like it in comparison to other porters? I, I'm not 100% sure. How do I like it in comparison to the other beers I've had from, from the guys at Bushwhacker? I've actually liked the other beers probably more than this one. Which is sad because a porter is one of my favorite styles, as you guys know. However, I'm open to everything and I'm open to every interpretation. And I know that every brewer is different and I know that every like, everything is different. Okay, that was the worst pour I've ever done. I like this beer. I'm trying to be quick because I want to go up to my family, but I don't know what to say. Like, I'm, I'm at a loss. I'm at a loss. And I can throw out a bunch of words. I can do this. I can do that. I can throw out buzzwords for the beer industry. I can do whatever the fuck I want because it's my fucking show. But, um... I don't know what to say about this beer. It's It boggles my mind as to what to say about this beer. Because I like the beer, but I can't really... Oh, oh, excuse me. I can't really fathom the fact that this beer is not what I hoped it would be. And I think it's because I had such high hopes because of this brewery. And I think this is where it is, right? I looked at this this bottle. And every time I looked at this bottle, I'm, I was like, you know what? That's going to be... And this is the problem with hyping things up in your own mind. Every time I looked at this bottle, I was like, this is going to be a 9 out of 10, man. Because I've had some beers from them and they've all been great. And that's one of my favorite styles. So it's going to be a 9 out of 10. It's guaranteed it's going to be a Porter Dance motherfucker time. So I'm going to make it my last review of a night one night so that I can do the Porter Dance and be happy. Go off the camera happy. And I'm not doing the porter dance for this. 
And I think part of its problem is that just that, I hyped it up in my head so much. Just like I hyped up the double, no, sorry, the triple chocolate cherry stout from um, Blackwood. Oh, sorry, Black Oak. Black Oak Brewing Company in Etobicoke. I hyped that beer up so much at the Toronto Festival of Beer that I drank my first sip of it and I'm like, what the fuck is this? And I liked the beer, but I didn't give it the mark it probably deserved because I had hyped it up so much. I'm like, this is going to be so amazing. And it wasn't. And I did the same to this. I was like, this is going to be so amazing. I actually even said to my wife, I'm like, look at what Dion got me. He got me a porter. I love porters. And then I drank some beers from them. And she's like, so how do you think that porter's going to go? And I go, like, I like their other beers so much. I think I'm going to love it. And she's like, well, that's good. I'm going, I know, it's so great. And then I drank it. And I'm like, yeah, it's good. But that's the best it is. It's good. That being said, could I drink a lot of these? Yes. I could drink a lot of them. I'd have no problem buying it. I'd have no problem enjoying it. I'd have no problem sharing it. I'd have no problem buying pints of it. So I guess out of 10 on it. I guess I have to give it a. Um, a 7.75. I don't think it's the. Because to me 8 and up is those upper echelon beers. I think it's a great beer. I think it's a solid beer. I think it's an easy choice to drink. But I don't think it's upper echelon. Which is sad because I really thought it was going to be top tier. Anyway guys. Slanche. Cheers. Bye bye.